the emergency, please. Bacon in. Mushrooms. Some fresh peas. <laughs> fresh frozen. There's a war coming, Ned. Do you know, it's, um, if it had, like, ham in it... Beans. If my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. He was already there, not need him. Finley, OK? I want to go through my there. And today I'm making something called a spaghetti carbonara or something. We need a card for a parking problem. Can we add some cream? As far as I know, the carbonara is done. <laughs> Friday, so I'm partaking in a beverage. Brewdog Duo Polis Oat Cream Double Dry Hop IPA. Blah, blah, blah. That was a mouthful. It's delicious, but I'm not a beer review channel, so that's about as much you're going to get out of what. That is about as much you're going to get out. Does that even make sense? That's about all you're going to get out of me. That's what I meant to say. But listen. Italian food is probably one of my favourite cuisines. I love it. And carbonara is one of my favourite recipes. I make it all the time, and you probably do as well at home. Or do you? Do you? But I guarantee after watching this video, what you think you were making was a carbonara is a total lie. You've been lied to, and it's not your fault. It's the internet, cookbooks, chefs, just bastardising this recipe and messing it up. And I don't know how. It's so simple to make. I don't know how they mess it up, because how are people meant to know what's traditional and authentic when cookbooks, the TV shows, the internet, websites are just full of confliction? Here's an example. This is not a carbonara. Neither is this. And that is definitely not a carbonara. And this stuff, right? This stuff that you get in a jar from the supermarket, the best thing you can use this for is to put up wallpaper with. It's trash. Now, if you've been with the channel for a long time, you might be thinking, he's already done this before, and I did. It was about four years ago. The video was trash, so I'm updating it. I've also kind of slightly changed how I make it. So, yes, we're gonna do a carbonara, updated, 2.0, and it's better. So make sure you watch the whole video so you don't miss a step, because it's crucial that you follow some certain steps, because if you don't, the end result's gonna be crap, basically. And remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please do that. So come on then, get your face down here. Let's get this started. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the meat. This is where your carbonara starts its journey. Now what I've got here is some pancetta and this is an acceptable substitution because traditionally you would use guanciale and the main difference between the two is pancetta is made with pork belly and guanciale is made with pig cheek. It's cured pig cheek and guanciale is used because it's quite fatty. The fat renders out and it gives it the flavour but guanciale is not as accessible as pancetta. I understand that. If you can get guanciale use it but if you've got pancetta that's nice and fatty we're still going to get the same result and i've got a nice heavy based pan here we're going to go in oh uh, oh excuse me we're going to go in with the pancetta cold pan and we're going to turn the pan on fairly low sort of low to medium he says oh steady on sunshine oh, yeah i set myself on fire and the reason you want a cold pan is because we need to render the fat out. And the only way you can do that is by putting it in a cold pan, slowly bringing the heat up, which starts to melt the fat, render it out, because we want that fat in our carbonara. That's what gives it the flavour. We also want to get them slightly crispy, but not too much. And this won't take long, it'll take a few minutes. And as that pancetta is sizzling away, we need to make our cream. Now you might be used to using cream in your carbonara, but Uncle Adam is here to tell you it's wrong. Cream does not belong in a carbonara. You get the creaminess from egg yolks and the cheese. Combine that with the pasta water in the sauce, magic happens, they all make love and you get carbonara. And for reference, I'm using the Burford brown egg. They have an amazing deep rich yolk, which, well, I've, I've yet to find an egg as good as the Burford brown. And that's saying something, that is high praise for a chicken period. So what I'm gonna do is separate the yolks from the white. And you can use the whites for something else. Make a meringue for dessert, it's up to you. Right, so we've got the eggs. There's our egg yolks. Look at the color of those, aren't they beautiful? Got another beer, hashtag not sponsored. And the next thing we're gonna add is our cheese. 
and he tripped over the bloody camera. And the cheese that we're using is Pecorino Romano, right? This is the authentic proper cheese to use for a carbonara. Now, a lot of people use Parmesan. You can do that, absolutely. That's a, that's a substitution that you can make. But Pecorino is just different. It's sharper, it's nuttier. It just goes really well with this dish. So Pecorino, use it. Come on, get into this. I want my cheese. Give it. And we're going to finely grate that into our eggs, into our yolks. And then just take a fork, just kind of whisk it all together into like a sludge, a slurry. Got like a cheesy egg yolky paste. And look at the colour of those yolks. Flipping amazing. Burford Browns, get them. Again, hashtag not sponsored. So basically all we need to do now is cook the pasta and then assemble everything together. Come on. Now look at the pancetta. See all that fat that's come out. There's no oil in that whatsoever. That is pure pancetta fat. That is what you want. That's what you're looking for. And ideally, you'd start cooking the pancetta the same time as you've got the pasta on. I'm not that organised, so that's why I'm doing the pasta at the last minute. Now, the pasta I'm using is called Buccatini. It's a spaghetti, but I don't think the camera's going to pick this up. But let's try and focus. It's not going to, is it? But basically, this spaghetti's got a hole running all the way through the middle. Hello? And that's just going to act as a vessel. The sauce is going to go inside the spaghetti as well as coat the outside. Okay, but you can use just normal spaghetti, that is fine. Now I've got a large pan of boiling water. Don't try and cook spaghetti in just like a small saucepan with a little bit of water. It's not gonna work out. The pasta's gonna become starchy, claggy, and not very nice at all. Make sure there's plenty of salt in there as well. Throw our bucatini spaghetti in. And the old myth that you need to add olive oil in there to help it not stick together, it's total BS. All you need is plenty of water in a big pan. It'll be fine. And you kind of want to follow the packet instructions, but maybe about a minute less, because you still want the pasta to be al dente. So whoa, that pasta says seven to nine minutes. So I'm probably going to cook that for seven minutes, maybe six. But you know, if you're in doubt, just take a piece out, taste it, see how cooked it is. Simple. 16 paranoia filled days later. Right, so I'm just going to test this pasta, just see how well it's doing. Hot, hot, hot. Mm. That was about. 30 seconds away to being perfect. So I'm gonna kill the heat and turn off the heat for your pancetta as well. Shut it down, shut it off. Shut it off! Okay, because if this pan's too hot, it's gonna mess things up big time. Then just get your spaghetti in. Doesn't matter if you get a bit of water in there. In fact, you want that. And don't throw that water down the sink, because we need it. Mix that all around. Get the spaghetti kind of mingled with the pancetta and just leave it for like 30 seconds because this pan is still too hot one debt to society later then we're going to add our cheese and egg yolk slurry from earlier and this is why it's important that your pan is not too hot because if it is that's going to turn to scrambled egg as far as i know the carbonara is done <laughs> then i'm going to add just about half a ladle full of the pasta water not too much because we can add some more if we need it basically start to mix that in and that small amount of residual heat is just going to kind of set the egg yolks. And this is where your creaminess comes from. No actual double cream in there at all. It's an emulsification of water, cheese and egg yolk. That's it. It shouldn't need any salt, but I am going to add some pepper. Plenty of black pepper. And it's not quite loose enough yet, so I'm going to add just a touch more pasta water. Another half a ladle full. And add as much or as little as you like to get your desired consistency. And I think that could do with some more cheese to get some more of that pecorino in there. And boys and girls, that's it. That's how you make a carbonara properly. It's nice and creamy. There's no scrambled egg in there. It's perfect. That's how you do it. So I'm going to plate this up, make it look all fancy, and then we'll tuck in. Right, let's give this a taste. I want to try and get a bit of everything on the fork. Let's go in. <laughs> it is like night and day compared to this crap. That pecorino has got a really nice saltiness. It's kind of sharp. And it's just got a really nice flavour. Yes, you can use Parmesan, but pecorino is better by far. It's so much better than any shop bought sauce, any ready meal, any rubbish flipping way like. Add in mushrooms, peas, cheddar cheese, ham, bacon. He's been flipping eyeing that pancetta up, haven't you? 
He has. He's been sniffing around, waiting for some, haven't you? You can't have it, buddy. It's like it's too salty for you. Well, look after your old little ticker in there, don't we? Right, let you down. So that's it. Properly made spaghetti carbonara. Done right. Now, if you enjoyed this video, stick a like on it, share it, subscribe. No, you're not having it. You can rub up my leg all you like. And leave a comment as well. Let me know what you think. So I'll see your gorgeous faces in the next video. And bye for now. Always asking for stuff. Anyone would think you don't get fed. <laughs>